reasonable compensation for trustee. Understanding trustee fees in California. That's our topic today and let's get started. Hi, I'm Kim Ward. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am an expert with helping with homes in probate or a trust administration. So what are reasonable trustee fees here in California? Even when a family member acts as a trustee, we see a high degree of conflict over this subject, especially when the claimed fee is small compared to the size of the trust estate. And if you found this video during your YouTube search, you may be grappling with a fee dispute having to do with a trust. But let me preface this, that I am not an attorney, nor am I a tax professional. So this is not legal or tax advice. It is a general overview of trustee fees here in California. California Probate Code Section 15681 generally permits a reasonable fee, but the term is kind of hazy in practice. Most California Superior Courts do not have fee guidelines in their local rules. While California Rule of Court 7.776 lists factors that may have to do with a trustee compensation, the trustee and the beneficiaries are likely to apply those factors differently. Here we will discuss the best practices for trustee with respect to claiming a fee. Let's use the common situation where mom and dad, they went and they picked one of their several children to act as their successor trustee. Of course, this comes into place once they pass away or are incapacitated in some way. So we'll call him Larry. So when he becomes a successor trustee, his siblings, Mary and John, may be resentful that he just didn't decline the fee that he can receive. The first thing you wanna do is seek clarity in the trust agreement. Much of the time, there is a fee amount included within the trust. So if you may be, or maybe you are already nominated to serve as the successor trustee in your parents' trust, ask them to work with their estate planner on how to calculate a fee for the time that you will be putting into acting as their successor trustee, especially when there's substantial work to be done outside of what is normal and customary, or if you are pretty certain that your siblings may be a bit hostile about you receiving that fee. The creators of the trust, known as maybe settlers, grantors, or trustees, can avoid or reduce the conflict by specifying a formula for trustee compensation. And they can put this into their trust instrument. Under California Probate Code, section 15680, a trustee is entitled to compensation as set forth in the instrument, the trust or the will. For example, the instrument, the trust or the will, usually if it's a probate, it's typically a will. It will state how the trustee would receive a management fee of perhaps 1% of the value of the trust assets. And they would receive that each year if they kept the assets, such in a case of investment property that they owned and the family chose to keep it with the rent amounts coming to the trust and then perhaps being distributed to the various heirs. Alternatively, the trust or will may have an hourly fee in it. And sometimes they take into consideration, and I hope they would, for inflation. Even general language in your trust or will regarding an agreement to pay may avoid a fight among your children or your beneficiaries or heirs. For example, mom and dad might write, given that we hold real estate and other assets, we acknowledge that our successor trustee will have to devote many hours administering the estate and our trustee should receive a fee for their services in accord with the hourly rate that a private fiduciary would receive. Keep in mind that professional fiduciaries licensed here in California, they charge in the neighborhood of $100 to $150 per hour. Such language will leave the trustee in a far better situation to claim a substantial fee than generic information authorizing a reasonable fee. 
So if you are a trustee, if you've never had a job like this, perhaps a job where you bill by the hour, you are now entering new terrain. You should start a time log upon the beginning of working as the trustee. Detail the date on which task has been performed and the number of hours per task. You'll want to break it down into fractional increments with a brief description of the nature of the particular task. Remember that more complex tasks generally warrant a higher fee. Such a log may be kept electronically or in some type of a spiral notebook. The calls that you'll be making on behalf of the estate, it can be easily tracked using your cell phone. That way you can show how long it took you to handle a particular phone call. Emails and texts also provide very good record keeping as well as billing invoices from an attorney who is hired to help the, and advise you as the trustee. Reconstructing timelines after the fact is not a great idea. It is difficult and as the trustee, you could lose many hours. And the other thing is hours, you know, hour estimates, they may not be accepted unless they are conservative. Make sure that you take a fee at regular intervals. California trustees generally receive their fee over the course of the trust administration without any court pre-approval rather than waiting until the trust is completed and closing out the entire trust. Spreading out the fee as in charging a fee at the end of each calendar year has several advantages. One, it may encourage the trustee to keep diligence in keeping that log of their time worked. Two, the fee might be an administrative expense against the income, thus reducing the income tax for the estate. Three, the trustee may actually pay less taxes for the income because the fee will be spread across multiple tax years rather than bundled into one single year. And four, the fee when spread across multiple years may be more palatable to the beneficiaries as opposed to a giant lump sum at the end of the administration. Since trustees often account annually to the beneficiaries, the fee is often disclosed during that accounting. You're going to also want to keep track of unreimbursed expenses. While the fee generally is treated as taxable income to the trustee during the year it was received, legitimate expense reimbursement is not taxable. So a trustee should keep a mileage log when it's in respect to a trust related travel, including any tolls that are paid, any expenditures to prepare mom and dad's home when preparing it for sale is also something that should be carefully documented with supporting invoices and canceled checks. Early on, a trust administration should establish an estate account. This is using a taxpayer identification number or an EIN, and I do have another video on this page all about that. A diligent trustee who acts prudently and in the interests of the beneficiaries deserves a fee for successfully administrating the trust. On the other hand, a trustee that delays things and doesn't handle things properly may experience a lower fee. California Probate Code Section 16420 permits the courts to reduce or deny a fee to the trustee when they've actually committed some type of a breach to the trust. And finally, it's a good idea to consult with an attorney when there's any type of question regarding what we've just discussed. So thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you next week. Go ahead and hit that bell button, hit the subscribe, give me a thumbs up and comment down below or ask me a question. I'll be sure to answer it. Thanks.